On today's edition of The Rabbit Hole, there are certain people throughout history that exemplify what it means to be the very best of humanity. These characters are most often born out of adversity and hardship. Others are crafted out of duty and bravery. In the worst moments, the worst excesses of our shared history, we find people who show us what it truly means to be human. Welcome to The Rabbit Hole, Politics and Prose, a Liberty Nation production. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. When we talk of the atrocities of history, we often do so with hushed tones, as if repeating them aloud, or sometimes even discussing them, is a mark of disrespect. We do it, perhaps, to show that we are thoughtful, or that we are taking a moment to say a private prayer. Yet in doing so, Is there a chance that we are not fully embracing the historical significance of these events? What happens when historical significance is not taken on board? Well, the answer is that we forget, or we distort, or we end up missing the important lessons that we could have learned. And invariably, if we fail to learn, we're doomed to repeat the same mistakes. But a major part of why we don't talk about the awful events of history must be because we, as supposedly civilised people, feel an aversion, a natural disgust to the horrors and crimes committed by our fellow man. It's a trap that we must not fall into. Perhaps when examining history, we should be looking for the spark of brightness in an otherwise dark tapestry. You see, sometimes, when we're examining the very worst that humanity has to offer, we also find, buried deep, the very best it has to offer too. Today, I want to tell you a true story about the life of an extraordinary individual, someone who is more the stuff of a Hollywood blockbuster than of history. And perhaps after hearing his story and the things he did, we can see that even when the hour is darkest, even when we are subsumed by the very worst the human race has to offer, there are still people, bright, bright people, shining in that gloom. I'm talking, of course, about Auschwitz, that dark stain on humanity that seems destined to forever haunt us as it displays the very worst of what we can become when we're driven by hate. I'll not recount the atrocities that took place there, but instead I want to focus on the actions of a single man, a Polish captain named Witold Pilecki. And perhaps from him, we can see that even when things seem at their most abject, there is still, left in Pandora's box, such a thing as hope. Witold Pilecki was a fighter, there's no other way to put it. He was born in 1901 in Poland and became a cavalry officer and intelligence man. The guy was a real brawler who seemed determined to be not just a hero, but an example to the entire human race of what we can achieve when we have courage and put our fellow man before us. His story was buried for more than 40 years and it didn't come to light until 1989 as it was censored by the Polish People's Republic the socialist dictatorship that existed until that year. They didn't want their crimes known, and they didn't want the stories of heroes known to a downtrodden populace. Here, I'll tell you his story, but I do recommend that you read more. It's really the stuff of legends. As a young man, Witold joined up with the Polish army to fight in the Polish-Soviet war that was sparked by Lenin's idea that, that Poland was somehow a bridge into Europe through which he could assist other communist causes. Witold would have been about 18 or 19 years old at this time. This was where he cut his military teeth. But you'd be mistaken if you thought that Witold was a man who spent his life in military service. He he also managed his family estate. He was a poet, a painter, and a humanitarian who set up social assistance programs in his own province, a civil defence force, a a volunteer fire department, and an agricultural association. He he was clearly a, a smart man and a good manager. When Poland yet again came under the threat of the Nazi invasion in 1939, Witold was at the forefront as an intelligence officer in the Polish resistance group. Yet he was now a man approaching 40 years old with a family of his own. His age and family and social situation make his next actions even more unfathomable to us. He was secure in his life, and yet he was about to undertake something 
that only the mad or the suicidal would even contemplate. Auschwitz had been up and running for about a year, but little or no information about what was taking place inside the camp was actually known. Everybody knew that people were dying in huge numbers, but they didn't know that either the details of the atrocities nor the organisation of the camp. In 1940, Witold presented a plan to his superiors. This plan involved getting himself captured, sent to Auschwitz as a prisoner, where he could gather intelligence and form a resistance movement within the camp. His superiors accepted the plan, and Witold Pilecki began his legend as the only man to have ever voluntarily gone to Auschwitz death camp. He was given a fake ID under the name Tomas Sefrinski, and got himself caught in a roundup of about 2,000 other Poles, he was initially detained for a couple of days, uh, where he was physically beaten with rubber truncheons, before being sent on to camp. His inmate number was 4859. When he arrived, he wasted no time at all. He established an underground movement known as the Union of Military Organizations, or, or ZOW, ZOW as they called it. ZOW worked at building inmate morale, uh, getting extra food supplies, uh, clothing, sending out information, building a resistance network that could take over the camp in short order if the Polish army ever managed to launch an actual assault. By 1941, Witold was sending regular reports to the Allies about what was happening in Auschwitz. And by 1942, he'd managed to set up a broadcasting station under the noses of his captors that provided invaluable information. The Camp Gestapo, uh, led by SS Untersturmführer Maximilian Grabner, himself later executed for war crimes and torture, he knew of Zhao, and was undaunting in seeking out members and executing them. Yet Vittol, he carried on, he persisted. Eventually, he determined that the best course of action would be for the Polish army to launch a ground assault against the camp. And to do so, he'd have to give a report in person to his superiors, so he did something that only a handful of people ever managed. He escaped from Auschwitz. Now, here's the thing about escaping from a death camp. It hardly ever happened. And when it did, it was usually a single person running from a work group outside the camp walls, um, an unplanned, unforeseen opportunity for freedom. But it speaks to the audacity and skill of the man that he managed to plan and execute an escape with two colleagues whilst taking valuable German documents with him. Not only was Witold Pilecki the only person known to have ever voluntarily been sent to Auschwitz, he was also one of the very few people who ever managed to escape. That he did so under a timetable and with allies in tow speaks to the immense bravery and talent that he must have possessed. Through his Zao network, he managed to get his team transferred to the bakery, where on the 26th of April 1943, in the dead of night, they overpowered the guards, cut the phone lines and escaped. He had been a prisoner in the worst place on earth for 945 days. But his story wasn't over yet. In 1944, he was again fighting for his country in the Warsaw Uprising. And by 1945, he was building intelligence networks in the face of the enemy. It would be more pleasant to end his story here. A brave man, having achieved the unthinkable and living to tell the tale... Yet he did not live out his later years in the comfort of friends, home and family. In 1947, he was arrested by the Polish secret police and imprisoned in what can only be described as the, the hellish prison, Rakowica Street. He was here for one year, during which time he was tortured mercilessly for information about his comrades and the resistance movement. He never talked. He kept his secrets and kept his oath as a soldier. In 1948, he was finally taken to trial, a show trial of course, and sentenced to death. When the court passed his sentence, Witold said, quote, I tried to live my life in such fashion, so that in my last hour I'd rather be happy than fearful. I found happiness within me, resulting from the realization that this fight was worth it. End quote. On May 25th, 1948, Witold Pilecki was shot in the back of the head. His body was never returned to the family, and no one knows where he was buried. A former chief rabbi of Poland, Michael Shrudic, wrote a book celebrating the life and actions of Witold called The Auschwitz Volunteer Beyond Bravery. 
There's a beautiful line in it that I think really exemplifies what we've been talking about. He says, quote, When God created the human being, God had in mind that we should all be like Captain Witold Pilecki of blessed memory. End quote. If only we could all be so brave. Thank you for listening to The Rabbit Hole, Politics and Prose, a LibertyNation.com production. Join us next episode. We'll be talking more history, politics, legends and stories. Until next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>